proudly covering all of Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. This is Eyewitness News at noon. Strong gusty winds rips the roof off part of a local city hall, then causes damage outside a hospital. We are tracking out the potential for severe weather on Eyewitness News at noon. Well, good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Kelly Byrne. We will get to the very latest on the coronavirus in our area in just a few minutes, but we do start with team coverage as much of our area is seeing widespread damage due to heavy rain and strong winds. Mark Hiller is in Wilkes-Barre and Anya Whitehead is reporting from Scranton, but we are starting with Chief Meteorologist Josh Hodell, who's tracking out the weather. So Josh, what should we know right now? Hello, Kelly. Thank you so much. A tornado watch has been issued for parts of central and eastern Pennsylvania all within the last half hour. Let's get right to that radar. We'll show you what's going on across the eastern part of the state. Now we're tracking off and on rain and some of this is heavier, but it's the action in western Pennsylvania that has that chance to become strong, if not severe over the next several hours. So we'll be watching that as it moves away from Pittsburgh and gets a little closer to us. Here's how the tornado watch breaks down. You can see most of us are under that watch that goes in effect through late this afternoon. The northern part of Pennsylvania has been spared from this watch, but that doesn't mean you're not going to see some interesting thunderstorms this afternoon. Uh, some of the main threats will be torrential downpours and strong damaging winds. There's that medium chance of getting some small hailstones and it's a low end threat of a tornado. Low end uh, means it's a smaller chance, obviously, but it doesn't mean that it's uh, non-zero. So kind of think about it that way. Obviously, uh, we do have that tornado watch in place. On top of all of this, you certainly don't need me to tell you that it's been windy. We have high wind warnings in effect. Gusts will continue upwards of 40, even 50 miles an hour. So that may lead to additional power outages as well as additional damage. We've seen a lot already this morning. And then throw in the strong storms on top of that. And we do think it's going to be a bit of a bumpy afternoon. One tool that may come in handy for you today is the Eyewitness Weather app. Uh, if you lose power, you still have your cell phone battery. So these alerts can come right to you no matter where you are. We have interactive radar is there as well. Plus, uh, we live stream our newscasts. So if your power goes out, you want an update with the weather and it happens to be news time, that's where you go. Download it, get it on your cell phone. Uh, we will update you on things hour by hour when I see you in about 15 minutes. Kelly, I'll talk to you then. All right, Josh, thanks so much. A widespread power outages and damage is being seen throughout NEPA with a local hospital and city hall being affected. Eyewitness News reporter Mark Hiller joins us from Wilkes-Barre with more. And Mark, what can you tell us right now? Kelly, right now in a windy, rainy downtown Wilkes-Barre, City Hall is evacuated and streets surrounding it are detoured as an already damaged roof is taking on even more damage as rain enters the building. Gusty winds whipped through downtown Wilkes-Barre around 8.30 this morning. When they did, they peeled back a significant portion of the four-story structure. A contracting firm called in to make temporary repairs is on hold because there's just too much debris on the roof right now to be able to put a protective tarp on it. Wilkes-Barre Mayor George Brown ordered the building evacuated and has set up a temporary command center at the Toyota Sportsplex at Cole Street Park. The roof is gone. So uh, basically now it's not just this problem we have, but also there's every section of Wilkes-Barre has been devastated by this this storm. Meanwhile, Wilkes-Barre General Hospital is dealing with its own wind damage. Strong gusts peeled back the underside of a pedestrian bridge this morning, which connects the main hospital with the medical office building and center for same day surgery. Insulation could be seen from the underside of that bridge blowing blocks away. The pedestrian bridge is still in use, but a detour is in place along the access road to enter the hospital campus. Back here outside City Hall, the building is expected to remain off limits to its employees for several weeks. That's what Mayor George Brown told me. He said instead, those employees will use that temporary command center set up at the Toyota Sportsplex at Cole Street Park. 
We're live in a damp and windy downtown Wilkesbury. Mark Hiller, Eyewitness News. All right, Mark, thank you for the live report. Well, power outages and down trees and even traffic lights are seen in Lackawanna County. Eyewitness News reporter Anya Whitehead joins us live from Scranton with more on the damage there. Anya, what can you tell us? Kelly, it is quite the scene here at Courthouse Square in downtown Scranton. An entire traffic light fell into the street, and we talked with those who saw damage firsthand. Wind is definitely howling. Uh, came outside with my dogs today, and actually, I'm pretty sure that they blew away as well. Um, there's trees down everywhere. There's winds that are gusting. It's just wild out here. This is what people across our region are seeing Monday. Severe weather caused a tree to fall on Marie Gregg's garage. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. I just came home, opened my garage door to see glass on the on the uh, pavement there and looked up and the, as you can see, the tree literally spiked right through my garage door. Greg was prepared for weather, but not the damage. We got the high wind warnings actually yesterday on my phone. I got the alert and as you can see, my house is surrounded by trees from my neighbor's yard, actually not mine. And so it's always a concern. Across Lackawanna County, there's garbage in the streets, down power lines, and hanging branches. A roof was swept off a warehouse that's believed to be vacant on West Linden Street in Scranton. And a traffic light fell on top of a truck at an intersection of North Washington Avenue and Linden Street in the city. Never seen anything like this up here. Never. This is, this is some southern weather right now. In the midst of a pandemic, people say it's the last thing they need right now. Well, it's definitely the last thing we need right now. We don't need any more catastrophes, crises, or anything like that. Uh, so hopefully people kind of stay inside and, and stay safe. It's, it's definitely going to cause some issues. Now, Kelly, we spoke to officials who do tell us it's going to be quite some time until this is cleaned up. Live in Scranton, Anya Whitehead, Eyewitness News. Amazing video there, Anya, thank you. Now, just into the Eyewitness Newsroom, the Pennsylvania Department of Health releases an update on the coronavirus in our state. More than 1,300 new cases have now been reported. It brings the statewide total to more than 24,000, with 524 people losing their lives in the state. Luzerne County has the largest number in our area, with more than 1,400 cases. 17 people have died in that county. Luzerne County Manager David Pendry says some non-essential county workers will be furloughed. It will affect both union and non-unionized workers. Voluntary furloughs will be offered until April 16th. All other possible furloughs will happen by April 23rd. There's no word on how many employees this will impact. A second Pike County EMS provider has tested positive for COVID-19, according to Delaware Township Volunteer Ambulance Corps. Health officials anticipate additional EMS providers will test positive in the coming weeks for COVID-19. A Lehigh County nursing home has seen coronavirus cases jump by one third since reporting a massive outbreak. Last Monday, the Genesis Healthcare of Lehigh Center reported 49 residents and staff members had tested positive and two residents had died. On Saturday, the nursing home reported 77 positive cases, which includes 51 residents and 26 staff members. In total, seven residents there have now died. A statement from the nursing home says it's following all guidelines from the CDC and the Pennsylvania Department of Health. And in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic, many jobs and classes have moved online, and that includes dance classes. At the Scranton Civic Ballet Company, rehearsals are taking place through Facebook Live and Zoom. Teachers have posted practice videos for lessons so students can practice social distancing. With the dancers being performance ready, they have to keep up their rehearsals for when they can take the stage again. Their art director says teaching from home presents certain challenges. I like hands on, and when you have a class at that bar behind me, I can walk up and down and correct. In this, I have to yell at them and say, turn that foot out, whatever. But it, it's, it's different. It's very different. The company postponed its April performances, but is ready to reschedule once businesses can reopen. Well, coming up, if you're stuck at home, why not tackle some spring cleaning? What you should focus on and some advice that may surprise you. That's coming up after the break.
This is Eyewitness News at Noon. Welcome back. Because we're under stay at home orders, why not tackle a chore you were probably putting off? In fact, doing this could result in a much safer, cleaner and healthier home environment. Chris Clackham has the details. Most of you who've been cleaning like crazy to hold the coronavirus at bay have also gotten a jump on spring cleaning. So it's best to take one room at a time, starting in the bathroom. Bathrooms are damp. They're perfect for bacteria and yeast and more to thrive. So disinfect doorknobs, handles, and other hardware before you begin and take the time to swap out razors. Dermatologists are now recommending you replace your razor every five to seven uses. My Consumer advocate Elizabeth Leamy says next move on to the kitchen where something else along with old sponges and cutting boards should be tossed. Battered old plastic food storage containers. We've all got a drawer full of them. And if they have the numbers three or six on the bottom in particular, they are outdated. Replacing mattresses should lead the list of spring cleaning the bedroom. If your mattress was made before 2010, it didn't benefit from the CertiPure US program, which makes sure that the foam used in mattresses is made without chemicals of concern. With all the cleaning in the spring of COVID-19, the advice is, do it like you've never done it before. Chris Clackham, Eyewitness News. You should also think about your fire detectors. They actually expire 10 years after their date of manufacture and should be replaced. The date is printed on the casing. Well, coming up, changes to boarding procedures with one major airline. How Delta is changing the way you get on its flights and how long it will last. That story and your forecast still ahead. Yeah, mic check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, your eyewitness weather forecast. And good afternoon. We have a lot going on with our weather today. We just had a tornado watch issued, so we're tracking the possibility of some strong storms. It certainly has been windy, and uh, we may get some heavy rain that could cause some minor flooding issues. So I think the radar is probably the best place we should start tonight. We'll show you what's been going on over the last two to three hours here. We have a batch of rain moving across parts of eastern Pennsylvania. 
Uh, but notice what's going on just outside of State College towards Erie and Pittsburgh. It's that line that we really need to keep an eye on, at least in terms of our severe weather potential this afternoon. So we're tracking that. We're tracking more rain to our south. It just looks like it's going to be a bit of an active weather afternoon after an already active weather morning here. Heavier rain right now through parts of Susquehanna, Wayne, Lackawanna, Luzerne counties. Some of that even down into Columbia and Schuylkill counties. And just in case you did not see it before, this is the tornado watch, all right? You can see it's for most of the southern part of the state, anywhere from Williamsport through Wilkes-Barre, Mount Pocono, and points south. That means that um, any storms that do develop today could possibly produce a brief tornado. So we need to be prepared for that. Right now in Dallas in the back mountain, it is cloudy, looks a little foggy, and it is wet. It's been an awfully wet night and first thing this morning. And I was hoping to show you some wind gusts on our weather bug camera system, but that doesn't want to work for me today. 63 in Williamsport, 62 Mount, or rather Pottsville, and we're still in the 50s in Mount Pocono where it's about 58. A high wind warning is in place for Lackawanna, Luzerne, Wyoming, and parts of Wayne County. Uh, so we may see the winds gusting 40, 45, even 50 miles an hour. <clears throat> the rest of us under a wind advisory. The bottom line is this. It's going to be an awfully windy afternoon and evening. Now, here's the radar over the next couple of hours. So this is what we think it may look like about 2 or 2.30. Scattered rain showers and thunderstorms, and it's those storms that we need to keep an eye on for the possibility of becoming severe. I do think this is wrapping up between 4 and 5 o'clock this afternoon, so that is certainly good news. And by later this evening, we'll be in much better shape. Now, in addition to that tornado watch, I think the biggest threats from any rain and storms that do develop this afternoon will be torrential rain and strong wind. Uh, so we're not totally out of the woods just yet in terms of these power outages and perhaps some additional wind damage. Here's your eyewitness weather forecast. Very windy today with off and on rain and thunderstorms. Highs will be in the 60s. The good news, it gets better tonight. Uh, it will stay windy, but the showers and the storms, they're gone. They start to go away. Lows will be in the 50s. And notice what happens here over the next several days. When we get back to that cooler weather, Highs in the 50s and the 40s, a little bit of sunshine, and maybe even some snowflakes again before this week is over. You may want the Eyewitness Weather app today. This way you can get those severe weather alerts no matter where you are. And if you have a power outage, you still have your cell phone battery. So this way you'll be able to see interactive radar and tracking rain and storms with us and we live stream our newscasts on our app. So you may want to download it and put it on your cell phone today. Kelly, it looks a little bit active for the better part of the afternoon, but I think by about five or six o'clock today, it's going to get a lot better. That's definitely some good news and throughout maybe the rest of the week as well. Josh, thank you. Well, coming up, the FDA issues an emergency authorization due to the coronavirus. What can now happen to N95 respirators used by thousands of healthcare workers? Plus, a new system in place when boarding certain flights. What Delta is now doing to keep passengers safe.
This is Eyewitness News at Noon. Welcome back. Delta Airlines is changing how passengers board its planes, and that tops our consumer report. It's the company's latest effort to curb the spread of the coronavirus. Passengers will now board planes from the back to the front, and flyers will have to wait until their row is called. The idea is to have people interact less while getting to their seats. Delta says the change will stay in place until at least May 31st. Walmart is seeing a surge in demand for hair care products. Hair color products and beard trimmers are flying off the shelves now that hair salons are closed. Sales of hair, hair clippers increased more than 160% and hair coloring product sales are up nearly 25%. There's also been a need for sewing machines as Americans make their own protective masks. In today's health speech, the Food and Drug Administration is authorizing the use of a decontamination system for N95 respirators. Those are devices that healthcare workers can use to protect themselves against the coronavirus. The FDA says more than 6,000 hospitals already have the decontamination system produced by advanced sterilization products. In total, they could clean about 4 million respirators per day. This is the third emergency authoriz authorization from the FDA this year. Well, up next on Eyewitness News at noon, taking an in-home workout to new heights. Why one man went up and down his stairs for four days straight. Are you going to count us down to the end of the show? And I just want to make sure Josh is aware too, since we have a kicker. Okay, cool. And Josh knows that. Okay, thank you. Let's make it a quick one. Okay. One man in England is taking his indoor exercise routine to new heights. 53 year old runner John Griffin spent four days climbing 41,000 steps okay, so inside his three story home. It equals 29,035 feet, which is the height of Mount Everest. It took 29 hours total of climbing to complete the task. So, pretty amazing he did that. Definitely a good day for an indoor workout for us. Chief Meteorologist Josh O'Dell joining us now with one last check of the forecast. Absolutely, Kelly. Thank you so much. You may want to stay inside today because of what you see on the radar here will be in and out of rain and some of this is going to be heavy and we may see some strong storms this afternoon. In fact, some of these storms could become severe and that's why we have a tornado watch in effect for all of these areas that you see here through this afternoon. And we know Kelly? you're tracking it out for us. Josh, thanks and thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day. 
For today's headlines, weather, and much more, go to pahomepage.com.